Hey, Howard here at 82 Maple, and by now, you know that 82 Maple is on the move. And this is the exact spot where part one of 82 Maple on the move ended. And before we talk any more about the move and some of the shots of how we moved the sawmill, the edger, and so on, let's go back to where this all started. It began early this year when uh, I had the opportunity to spend the last of my dad's days with him while he was at a ripe old age of 99 years and nine months. Now, while I was spending those days with him, uh, when Coral wasn't directly involved in supporting me or my dad, uh, she did a little browsing uh, of the local real estate market. And uh, wow, I gotta tell you, this was love at first sight. 20 acres here in the wonderful Okanagan with all sorts of uh, just interesting stuff. And we'll take a little bit of a walk around here, but uh, we're gonna pan over. There's just lots of project work going to be required here. We've got a barn that is uh, substantially sound, but uh, needs some cosmetic treatment. Uh, Coral loves those horses and she's got a Eurosizer there, uh, an automated horse exerciser. Uh, we'll do a little focus on that one of these days. Uh, we're pretty much at the end of the move while we're shooting this. And so we've got some temporary housing for the chickens. And uh, uh, hey, there's Coco the pig. How you doing, Coco? It's a hot day and uh, Coral's just going to pan over to the creek and uh, that's where Coco spends a lot of her time. Uh, we're getting some of the outbuildings organized and uh, you know what's really neat about this property, sticking with the theme of 82 Maple, is it's zoned for the sawmill and uh, we're just loving that part of it. So we're going to walk around to the other side here and uh, by the way, uh, this is one of the little cargo trailers that helped us with our move and because I don't have any shelter for the sawmill right now um, uh, We're going to use this to house my sawmill tools and equipment But uh, you know when Coral and I after we first viewed this uh, we just about tripped over ourselves to hurry and list our uh, uh, six acres in Langley uh, and uh, see if we could make the move here to 20 acres uh, work and it did and uh, we're just so grateful to be here and part of that gratitude has to do with this wonderful little creek that runs through here and in a few minutes I'm going to share out a clip that I took on uh, from our very first day here on the property when the creek was flowing considerably higher I shot a little video for some of the grandkids um, you know, Coral and I are not adverse to moving. Uh, in our first 13 years together, we moved 11 times, but never a move like this. There were no animals involved, other than a couple of puppy dogs. Uh, there was no sawmill, there was no edger, uh, there wasn't all of the stuff that comes with having horses. This was quite a move, and you've seen uh, 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 bits of video from the first of eight or nine trips that we took over the Coquihalla Pass, 10 hours round trip. So there had to be some pretty compelling reasons for us to make this move. And part of it is we're gonna walk up here past the uh, log house that was built in 1928. Now it's been added to, it was added to in the 70s and again in the 80s. Uh, but uh, the log house that we're going to walk by was originally uh, the foundation laid down in 1928. It was jacked up and leveled, uh, re-leveled again just a few years ago. And uh, right now you're going to see the uh, accomplishments of a crew of folks that we've had in here taking those logs right down to the original. There had been uh, paint put on them and other things, it was peeling. And uh, so it's a bit of a labor of love, but uh, we're stoked about how it's going to turn up, out. We'd show you inside right now, but it's completely gutted. And uh, we'll track the progress of that separately. We're in the process now of taking down some fences. 
This is going to be the uh, implement area. We're going to put a drying shed in, implement parking. And uh, over here, we'll see where the, the sawmill is sitting. Uh, we've uh, grown the implement fleet a little bit uh, as we came over here. Uh, there's a John Deere 5103 that came with the property. It's just a real workhorse. It's about 2007 vintage. And um, uh, then there's uh, the 4406 here. Uh, we picked that up uh, just to help. I needed a, a tractor that could do some heavy lifting at the loading end and another tractor that would do some heavy lifting at the unloading end. Uh, one of the things I'll show you is we created a little bit of a poor man's telehandler. What I missed showing you down at the barn is that there's a wonderful loft but the entry to the loft, the second story entry that you can take and put um, uh, just a host of, uh, uh, of the things that we've collected over the years in through the front entrance. But that front entrance to the uh, second story loft is about a foot higher than what either of these tractors will lift. So we created uh, a nifty little ramp and uh, I'll, I'll show you how all of that worked out. Um, you know, the uh, uh, trailer here, the combination of this flat deck trailer and the F-350, we're pulling uh, at least three trips over the Coquihalla where the gross combined vehicle weight was 25,000 pounds. No issues with heating, even though the outside temperature on a couple of those days was in excess of 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, so it was right up there, even higher than that. We, uh, the logs uh, brought a few to get me started here. Again, the property is zoned for sawmill. And so brought a few logs to get us started on, on some of our building. And uh, all of those logs came over in uh, two trailer loads, I believe. So got to get that sawmill set up and uh, uh, the property extends right back up. We've got an acre and a half of some Douglas fir and other trees up there. Oh, look at the horses out there. So uh, I needed some storage for tools. So the black cargo trailer over there is going to be tool storage for a bit of time. And uh, wow, we're just so grateful to be here. It's uh, on its best day. It's probably a bit of controlled chaos, but uh, we're all over that. We're tearing down fences here and, uh, and making room and just having a ton of fun. So stick with us. Coming right up, uh, a little uh, video that I did for the grandkids. And then we're going to talk about how we loaded and tied down the 4406 onto the flat deck for a return trip back to Langley. Uh, learning all sorts of things about tying down equipment and keeping everybody safe. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's an absolutely glorious day here uh, on Shram Road. I think we've concluded that we're going to call this Kettner Creek Farm. And I'm going to give you an idea of why that is. Hey, we just finished strapping down that tractor for the first time and figured out where the balance points are. Tons of fun. But look at this. This is a view from the bridge. So let me back up. Here's the bridge. And the view from the bridge. Look at that. A real creek that never dries up. And we parked the camper up there. There's the house, the old log house built nearly a hundred years ago. But I just want to keep looking at this creek. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Hey, over there, that's Grandma Corky's new horse walker. The horses exercise in that pen. And that barn over there is, should be lots of fun. There's a loft in it. All sorts of room to scramble around. Love you guys. Tons and tons. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Hey, hope you enjoyed that little video about the creek. You know, that stream actually goes up or down 
four to six inches in a 48 hour period, depending on what's happening up in the mountains. I just love that little stream. Welcome to my office. Welcome to our home. So while Coral and I are renovating, we're living inside 600 square feet. Like that's been a long time since I've lived in anything that small. But you know, we just treat it like an adventure. It's like we're camping. So Coral and I, we love these multi-day backpack trips. And we've actually had the privilege of doing Kilimanjaro and summoning it at 6 a.m. in the morning with the sun coming up over the Serengeti. We've done Everest Base Camp. And so we're just treating this like this amazing camping expedition. Let me show you around just quickly. So here on the table, we've got color samples, wood samples, etc. that we're going over. We're trying to figure out what we do at this place so it all looks presentable at the end of the day. And these flowers, we went down to the Kelowna Farmer's Market. We got two bouquets like this for the princely sum of $16. Does it get any better than that? And we managed to squeeze a little bookshelf in here. I actually refer to this book periodically, The Daily Stoic, like with the chaos around here yeah this is kind of a calming book a little card from our good friend Janet she took this picture of a bumblebee on, on a flower and presented it to us uh, this is my go-kart helmet from uh, that was the helmet I used when I raced in Italy and so whenever I'm tempted to bang my head against the wall this helmet is really close by and very very handy for you know those days and uh, what great window blinds we have. We're in the middle of painting the outside of the house and they're spray painting it. And uh, so anyway, that's been our window blinds for the past couple of days. We're so far out in, gonna lapse into Williams Lake vernacular, the boonies, that uh, in desperation, we finally brought in a home cell phone signal booster something. Gonna set this up tonight. Hopefully that helps. Coral, what have you had? Only five dropped calls today or seven? <laughs> At least five. <laughs> we lose track every day of dropped cell phone calls. There's where Coral's real estate office. Yeah, <laughs> she's going full steam ahead and that's the entire office. And we're right next, we're, we're up front close and real. Uh, dog prints on the door. Yes, we have uh, three dogs, four dogs roaming the property, one living with us. And uh, Brad, one of our trades, is out there installing a new door in the side of the garage. That's the new uh, uh, shade of gray that's going to be going on the outside here. Very trendy. Uh, not too trendy, hopefully. Hey, so now we're going to just jump into some of the uh, photos uh, of some recent happenings. So first one up here, what do I have? Okay. Here we have Dwayne from Prairie Coast. He just delivered the John Deere 4406 and uh, we're loving it. It's gonna do a lot of heavy lifting around here. We've got a ton of work to do. Then, uh, hey, there's my brother Kelvin. He's lived over here in the Okanagan for 20 plus years. He's been part of the persuading influence that brought us here. He's an optometrist, runs the boutique optometry center in the city of Kelowna, just 20, 25 minutes away. And he was here to share the joy of the delivery of the John Deere. Now, as you're going to see, Coral quickly took ownership of this John Deere. So the video you're going to see here is uh, Coral took ownership of this uh, brand new John 4406. I think she likes the air conditioning. Maybe she likes the radio. Maybe she likes the combination or maybe she's thinking about what it's going to be like plowing snow this winter, but in an enclosed cab. So with daughter Kelsey spotting, you're going to see Coral just getting right at it here after which she's going to be loading the tractor onto our little trailer because we've got to hike that thing for Langley where we've got some heavy lifting to do. So here we have it. Coral successfully loaded the 4406 onto the flat deck trailer and we're ready to head it back for Langley. Uh, I've already checked the uh, trailer hitch ball weight using the little scale that I had referenced in the last video. 
This tractor is perfectly balanced here. Now you'll notice that should the wind catch those doors, those doors are going to swing open, catch the wind, blow right off. So I'm going to have to zap those shut. And uh, so, uh, I, but I also have to more importantly, tie this down. So our balance is right. I've got a thousand pounds on the hitch ball and uh, we're ready to roll except for the tie down. So here we go. Uh, it's not just the yellow straps holding this on. If you look closely, I've cross tied it. There's a wonderful tie down bracket right at the very front of the frame. And I'm using that. I've looped the chain through it. I've used the cinches. You'll get a close up of the cinches as I go to the back left hand corner. Uh, this, uh, in order to keep the tractor from moving forward, I'm going to cross chain this. This is the left view. And now we have the right view. Uh, you'll see the cinch that I'm using there. I love those ratchet cinches way better than those snap over center ones. And uh, we're tied down. That's a little ballast weight box on the back. I'm going to put some ballast in there in the form of some three quarter inch crushed gravel when we pull into Langley. Here's a close up. If you're wanting a quick view of, ex of the uh, uh, really well-designed cross-tie brackets that are built into this particular unit. And without a lot of muss or fuss, we're ready to roll. I'm ready to head it for Langley. And just going to stop at the very first brake check, about 15 kilometers from here. Check those tie downs. Something always jiggles loose a little bit. I'm good for a couple of, of uh, uh, quick adjustments. And then we're off and rolling. But before we get to Langley, there's a little granddaughter, Evelyn, in Chilliwack that is going to jump into the driver's seat and that's going to put a great big smile on her face. Uh, she, she just loves tractors and equipment. And so it wouldn't have been complete without giving her a chance to jump behind the wheel. Look at that smile. That's pretty much worth the entire purchase price of this tractor. So here we go. The first order of business is to lift uh, a pretty weighty log. Now these logs were dropped off by a crane truck and this tractor handles it like nobody's business. I think we have between 22 and 2400 pounds of lift capacity right on the pin. I've got a nifty little grapple that worked well on my John Deere 1025. It works equally well on the 4406. I just have to take care not to power too much into it. I'm sure that the sheer weight and force of the 4406 could bend that up. So just common sense and care. And uh, hey, I've got to throw a load on here. What you're looking at is some true cut two by 12s for resurfacing that bridge. If you got a view of that bridge as I rolled into the property, you'll recognize that it needs some resurfacing. That bridge is actually specced out to hold 110,000 pounds, but not with a patchwork quilt of little blocks across it like you've seen. We're laying down new treads on it. And so this is the driver's side view. On the passenger side, there's an equal stack. What you'll notice if you look really closely, in addition to strapping it down and putting some equipment down between the two piles of lumber, I've also used the regular banding strapping that you typically see on lumber piles to hold each of the right hand and left side stacks together. And you know what? Hey, let's fast forward five hours. And there we are, ready to offload in Langley. Safe, secure, sound. Offload in Kelowna on Shram Road on the new property. Put the loose implements down the center, did strap them all in, but it just worked out really, really well with just a little bit of thought and planning. The F-350 handled it, handled it well. Hey, here we go. Howard at 82 Maple. We're keeping two thumbs, four fingers, eight fingers <laughs> <laughs> and, and a truck and a trailer and a John Deere. And what is that now? Two down, seven trips to go. 
we can do this. We always do. It's what it's, it's all about at 82 Maple.